the origin is kind of interesting because I never really thought about it. You know, it was just one of these things. I was a chemist. I was working on harvester ants in Georgia. And I got stung by one. I said, wow. You know, I'd been stung by honeybees, bumblebees, yellow jackets, paper wasps, sweat bees. You know, you name it. You can go on the litany of whatever. And they all kind of hurt. But they were different. The, the harvester ant really, really hurt like three or four hours. And I got the question of, oh, well, I need to rate this. So that was pretty much the origin of the sting pain scale. I wanted to put numbers on sweat bees, bumblebees, honeybees, and harvester ants, and use this as a way then to uh, explain and understand the evolution of defensive behavior in, in various insects. Mainly what we want to do with it now is use it as a tool for scanning and surveying what are interesting ways to go. In other words, certain people were interested in things of medical importance and I can kind of through the pain scale direct you to well these are promising these are not promising yeah, the ignoble was one of these things that kind of came out of the blue like so much of life and the fun things in life that I hadn't really thought about it you know I just got this call from Mark Abrams and he's wanted to talk to me about something I thought well, a lot of people were in, into, you know, freak shows and all that, so I wanted to make sure this was legitimate. And finally found out it was super top secret, so it ended up being Ig Nobel, which is one of these things. It's just such fun, you know, we just had a wonderful time. We went up to the, the awards ceremony, and I got one minute to talk about my whole life's history of stinging insects. It's like day and night the difference between publishing a, a popular science, scientific book and you know just strictly a pure scientific book. The scientific book, you just do it on your own. You can be kind of direct statements. You don't have to have any kind of flair to it. You don't have to have any much appeal, which is actually kind of a shame because you know, really our future depends on the, on the generation getting excited by what we're doing. And that's the advantage of the popular book. That, you know, this, this book that I wrote is actually designed to get your attention, but in, in a positive way. Entomology is cool, biology is cool, science is cool, you know, life is cool, and all this is wrapped up together. But not only that, I wanted to make sure it turns out it's something scholarly. You can say, well, Schmidt says such and such here. Is he just making this up? Is this all just fiction? No, there's, there's references that tell everything is there. So if you want to figure out about elephants being chased away by honeybees, we got the references for you. And so it's, it's really much more fun to write a, a popular one, but it's much harder. And then afterwards, the whole difference is when you're writing a scientific thing, you know, you publish it and you put it down in your CV and maybe you send out a few uh, PDFs to people, you know, a handful of people who care. You know, whereas with a popular thing, you end up having to be out there promoting it. You spent two, three, four, five years, in my case it was about four years writing this, you want to make sure that the message gets out there. And so now you're your publicist in chief. And that's a whole new realm, which is kind of scary, you know, when you're when you're a scientist and you're used to just talking to other scientists and now all of a sudden you have to talk to, you know, people that haven't a clue what an insect is. Many of them have a fear of insects. And your goal is to make them love these insects. And that's a real challenge, but it's very exhilarating when you can actually do this. I'm doing a lot of fun things. I'm, I'm working on a lot of non hymenoptera at the moment. One of the more intriguing things I've gotten interested in is, is spider eggs. You say, what? Spiders aren't even insects. Well, they're sort of bugs in the generic term. They have jointy legs and all. But it turns out I've been doing a phylogenetic study of toxins in spider eggs. And it turns out a lot of them are really toxic. You know, they're as toxic as honeybee venom. And this is something totally out of the blue that, that we're working on. It's not yet in print, but that's one project that's ongoing. Then I'm working on these wonderful arachnids called vinegaroons. They're great big five centimeter black, just the most beautiful animals that you ever see. They live out in the desert and in the tropics, and they have these long kind of cool antennae and this big whippy tail at the end of them. And I'm doing natural history of those and some of their defensive behavior. And then to get really bizarre, I've been working on triatoma, kissing bugs. And these are really unpleasant bugs. 
you know, they bite you and they itch ferociously. Oh, man, they're awful. You scratch. As if that's not bad enough, you know, doctors don't care about itch and, and medical funders don't care about itch, but they transmit Chagas disease, which kills 50 or so thousand people a year in Latin America. So far, we haven't had any deaths in the U.S., but with global warming, you never know. But to me, even worse than what they do is they cause this allergy and get an anaphylactic reaction. And we've had two people die of allergic reactions from these things. So I'm studying basically the natural history again. The basic fundamental stuff, we've got to control these things. We've got to know what they do, when they do it, and how they do it, who they eat, how they reproduce, and all these things, how long they live. And these are basic questions that will be very useful when we have to you know, apply something to control these things. Jimmy Kimmel's show was one of these things, again, like so much of life, which is what makes it interesting, just came out of the blue. I had no idea that this was, you know, in the works. And they uh, wrote an email, and so I responded to it, and my publicist said, oh my goodness, we're going to be on Jimmy Kimmel. And, you know, I hadn't really paid any attention to it. I was you know, so overwhelmed with other things that I hadn't really thought about. But then when I got on the show, it was just magnificent. And Jimmy is just the coolest guy, you know, he's... He's just so cool on his under fire, and you know he's just really impressive. He, he puts you at ease, gets you relaxed, and you have a lot of fun. We enjoyed it. It was the only drawback was I wish it had been a lot longer because we were just having so much fun. Could have gone on, you know, twice as long. I'd never really thought about that. That was actually my. My first Marvel movie, I shouldn't admit that, that I'd seen. And I got a book review, or mo movie review, pardon me, that said that I was mentioned in, in the uh, Marvel review. And I thought, huh? You know, on a trailer when you have just two minutes to talk about, you're going to mention the Schmidt pain scale? And it turned out it was just really cool. We went to the movie, took the family and all the kids and everybody, and we got these, these special glasses that you put on and see it in 3D. It was a really good movie. I enjoyed it. And they mentioned, they mentioned it twice. Not just once. We got mentioned twice. So I think that was really cool. You know, it's just one of these things that surprises are wonderful.